Hello friends. Today we will be discussing about structure of organism, which is first topic of our discussion. So when we talk about structure of earth, as mentioned in our literature, you can see the picture which shows the three part of the earth. If we take a section of earth, the uppermost part is crust, which can be divided into two type of crust. One is continental crust, and other one is oceanic crust. Then followed by mantle. In mantle, we also have two parts. One is called as outer mantle, another one is called as inner mantle. Moving towards core, at the center of Earth, we have two type of core. One is called outer core, which is liquid in nature. Another one is called as inner core, which is solid in nature. If you move from the surface of Earth towards core, and you see differentiation in different layers, the first thing which we encounter is lithosphere. Which is something around zero to eighty kilometer, which covers crust plus uppermost part of the outer mantle, followed by asthenosphere, which ranges till eighty to four hundred kilometer, and this asthenosphere lies from eighty to four hundred kilometer, that is a part of outer mantle below the lithosphere, and this asthenosphere is weak. So it is plastic in nature. Then you can see in the picture at a distance from surface of Earth, two thousand nine hundred kilometer, we have a discontinuity which is called as Taylor-Gutenberg discontinuity. And as you can see in the diagram, that the radius of Earth is near about six thousand four hundred kilometer. Now we will be discussing the details of crust. Crust are of two type. One. is continental crust another one is oceanic crust continental crust when we talks in terms of thickness it ranges from 0 to 35 km and can go up to 70 km on the other hand the oceanic crust ranges from 0 to 7 km and if we compare both type of crust the continental crust is thicker in nature as compared to oceanic crust which is thinner in nature If we try to classify the Earth according to the stratification, so there is a general thumb rule: the heavier elements or the matter will be in the center or at the bottom, and the lighter element or the matter will be in the upper layer or strata. So, higher the density of the metal or higher the density of the matter, it will be in the lower layer. Lower the density, it will be in the upper layer. crust beneath the ocean we referred as oceanic crust and it is thinner and crust beneath the continent is called as continental crust and it is thicker lithosphere we have already explained that this is a crust plus uppermost part of the outer mantle asthenosphere as all of you know now that it lies from 80 to 400 km that is a part of outer mantle below lithosphere and it is weak so plastic in nature now we will be talking about one by one if we talk about the core so core is basically composed of iron and nickel so core is rich in nickel and iron so it is also called as nif layer mantle is generally rich in iron and magnesium so it is also called as fmg layer and if we compare the composition of continental crust as well as oceanic crust continental crust is rich in silicon and aluminium that's why we call it as sometime as cr layer oceanic crust is rich in silicon and magnesium so sometime we call it as a sima layer now a very important and interesting questions ugc generally ask is that the relative proportion of elements in crust so when if they ask the relative proportion of element into crust there is a specific rhyme to remember this thing Which is written there in the literature, and it is like old, which stand O for oxygen, sibling, Si, which stands for silica, followed by aluminium, followed by iron, followed by calcium, followed by sodium, followed by potassium, followed by magnesium, and the rhyme says as old sibling of Elvina, fair 
Calcutta, Nainital, Kerala and Magad. Oles, O stands for oxygen, sibling SI stands for silica, Alvina, AL stands for aluminium, Fear, FE stands for iron, Calcutta, CA stands for calcium, Nainital, NA stands for sodium, Kerala, K stands for potassium, Magath, MG stands for magnesium. There is another question which is generally being asked in most of the exams that what is the relative proportion of element in earth as a single unit. So remember this thing here we are talking about earth as a single unit and the order is Fiosima NSC all. The rhyme is Fiosima NSC all and the order is iron, oxygen, silicon followed by magnesium, nickel, sulfur, calcium and aluminium. And when we talk about the proportion of these three layer in earth, so mental is having more proportion as compared to core, as compared to crust. Moving ahead in the literature, which is compiled by the team of ASS Science Foundation, Delhi. If you talk about depth, then depth wise we can say core is more as compared to mental, as compared to crust. And if you want to calculate the thickness, so core you can calculate from uh, 6400 km to 2900 km, which is something around 3471 km. Mental, if you talk about it, is something from 2009 km till 70 km, so it comes out to be 2820, and ultimately from 0 to 70, which is crust. Coming to the concept of density of these layers, which is crust, mental, and core, as we have already said. Heavier element will be at the bottom and the lighter element will be at the top of the surface of earth. So in that order, the more heavier element will be in core and in core also the inner core will be more denser as compared to the outer core. And if we followed by mental, followed by crust, further in mental, the inner mental will be more denser as compared to the outer mental, followed by crust. Now we come to the average density of earth. So the average density of earth as a whole is 5.5 gram per cubic centimeter and as all of you know density is nothing mass of a substance divided by the volume of substance. Density of water which is very important used in most of the numerical which comes in the competitive exams is 1 gram per cubic centimeter or 1000 kg per meter cube. It depends upon the choice of unit. If you are taking CGS unit, then it will be 1 gram per cubic centimeter. And if you are taking MKS unit or SI unit, it will be 1000 kg per meter cube. CGS unit, as all of you know from your elementary classes, the length is measured in centimeter, the mass is measured in gram, and the time is taken in seconds. SI unit or MKS system, which we called as distance, is measured in meter, mass is measured in kilogram. Time is measured in second and this is considered to be more authentic system. Now you can talk about something about dimensions. So generally we denote M for mass, L for length and T for time. Density as all of us know is mass per unit volume. So it could be written as M raised to the power 1 divided by L raised to the power 3. So dimension formula for density could be written as M1 L raised to the power minus 3. On the other hand, if you want to represent velocity as displacement divided by time, so displacement would be represented as length and time as t. So the dimension for velocity will be L1 t minus 1. Similarly, acceleration can be expressed as change in velocity divided by the change in time which is written on the right hand side which is V2 minus V1 divided by T2 minus T1. So the dimension for acceleration will be LT minus 2. Hope the things are clear here. Now we will be differentiating and comparing the oceanic crust and continental crust. So if we come on to the first point that is the nature. So oceanic crust is thinner in nature which ranges from 0 to 7 km as we have already mentioned. Continental crust is thicker in nature from 0 to 35 km. And according to the recent studies done, the oceanic crust is younger 
in nature because it is formed from the new lava from the mantle from the new oceanic crust and continental crust is older then we come on the point of density so if we talk about oceanic crust oceanic crust is more denser the density is around 2.9 gram per cubic centimeter because it is made up of basalt that is silica and magnesium and continental crust on the other hand is less density which is 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter made up of granite and if we compare the composition wise oceanic crust is rich in silica and magnesium and continental crust is rich in silica and aluminium now we are reaching towards a very important concept the concept of mineral and rock so mineral in a simplified word is defined as assemblage of elements on the other hand rock is defined as assemblage of minerals i will take a simplified example to represent this for example if you take elements like calcium carbon and oxygen and if we combine them the mineral form is calcium carbonate so as we said mineral is nothing but the assemblage of element further this calcium carbonate which is formed is referred to as a limestone rock and rock as we mentioned it is assemblage of minerals similarly we can take another example of nacl the elements are sodium and chlorine which combine to give nacl so nacl is a mineral and it's a rock which is called as halite rock then we are coming to the layers and the most abundant mineral present in those layers so we will talk about crust so the most abundant mineral present in crust is feldspar and if you talk about the mental the most abundant mineral present in mental is pyroxene and olivine now we will be talking something about the earthquake as you can see mentioned in our literature earthquake occurs mainly due to the faulting of the layers or plates and as you can see in the diagram at the center we have a focus or which we call as hypocenter and the origin of this focus or hypocenter is inside the earth and exactly above this focus or hypocenter is the point which is called as epicenter which is having a 90 degree angle to the focus or hypocenter from the center of earth as you can see from the diagram then we will be talking about earthquakes which produces the waves so earthquakes generally produce two types of waves first the body waves which are also called as p wave and s waves which travels on the body of earth and these waves help in deciphering the structure of earth and they do not cause any damage on earth on the other hand the other type of wave is surface wave which is also classified as love wave and relic wave which travel only on surface and these are the waves which cause damage on earth coming to the finer details of earth if we talk about the mass of earth so the mass of earth is 5.9 into 10 to power 24 kg and if we further talk about the difference in the masses of crust mantle and core you can see the crust is having a mass of 2.5 10 to the power 22 kg followed by mantle which is 4 into 10 to the power 24 kg followed by core which is 1 into 10 to the power 24 kg now we will be discussing something about the discontinuity so discontinuity is nothing as we have the surface separating material of different layers according to different properties of the mineral present in the different layers of earth so that's why we have discontinuities in various layers of earth discontinuity can also be defined as the surface between the two layer in which the composition of the mineral changes abruptly and hence the velocity refractive index and other property changes these are different type of discontinuity and the name is given on the basis of the scientist who discovered them the first one is more discontinuity more discontinuity occurs between crust and mantle followed by 
Taylor-Gutenberg discontinuity, which is a very important discontinuity, and most of the time 